The JHMCU GHF 420 AO flight controller with the MPU 6000 gyro was an amazing 20x20 all in one flight controller, and one that I've used in all my builds for the past two years. I even designed a 3.5 inch frame around it. Unfortunately, over the past few months, it went from being hard to obtain to impossible to obtain. Recently, GHMCU released an updated version with a new modern ICM 42688 P gyro and 40 amp ESCs, while keeping the same size. As soon as they became available to order, I bought a few of them. Will they meet or exceed the performance? of their predecessor? The answer is no. No, they won't. Do not buy these. Oh. Recursion Labs. For science. When I first looked at the spec sheet for the ICM 42688-P gyro, it looked promising, as long as it was powered correctly. This gyro was only recently supported by Betaflight, so this seems to be mostly uncharted territory. When I received them, I inspected them under my bench scope. The new gyro is much smaller, and the first thing I noticed is they modified the existing board design and replaced a tiny capacitor with a giant one in the new design. They reduced the size of the boot button to help make it fit. This seemed promising, since it showed that they at least put some thought into getting clean power to it. What didn't seem promising is that now now the product page have instructions that you need to increase the default gyro filtering in Betaflight on all these boards. Where in my smaller builds, I've found that having less gyro filtering gives a noticeable boost in stability and handling. To see if it's worse, I built a new scythe that has an identical build to two others I have with the previous MPU 6000 board. I copied over the config, including the reduced filtering to see how it would respond in the air. I wasn't disappointed, is what I would say if I wanted it to fly like shit, because it flew like shit. Gyro noise was definitely getting through to the PID controller, and with air mode, I could cruise around with zero throttle as error mode would keep it in the air fighting the noisy gyro data. So it's clearly worse at this point. Well, this is why gyro filters exist. So I cranked them up to about default. Taking off and doing a bit of moving around, it seemed okay at first, but when I moved to doing some throttle punch out test, the quad started to violently twitch as if the motors were losing sync. I landed and took a look at black box and what I saw was odd. At a higher throttle, the gyro would report the quad moving at over 300 degrees per second, which it quickly fought to correct, causing the twitch. It patterned of the gyro freaking out looked fairly similar as it repeated and occurred every time the throttle was punched on the roll axis. I tripled the capacitance and added the TVS diode stack that came with the flight controller to no positive effect as I expected. I did a ton of testing with various settings and filters including 24 and 96 kilohertz ESC update rates, lowered PIDs and nothing stopped the twitching. Whatever is happening it's coming from the gyro as bad data that cannot be filtered. I consulted with the wonderful Betaflight developers and they said that's as excitingly freaky as I've ever ever seen from a gyro, and that it had lost its mind. We agreed the next step was to do a bench test that you're not supposed to do at home, and scope the gyro while it's malfunctioning. I clamped down the quad and repeatedly throttled the motors to 100%. <laughs> Checking black box, and it didn't happen. The gyro trace looked clean. So whatever is making the gyro go to Tourette's mode needs to be in the air, perhaps with this more physical and electrical noise. This is only happening to me severely on roll, and everyone I spoke to suggested that a bad gyro or EMF can manifest on a single axis. One theory I couldn't get out of my head was that this frame does have more noise on roll with a resonance at around 500 hertz, and the repellers I'm using would hit 30,000 RPM at about 80% throttle, which is 500 revolutions per second, or 500 hertz. Hertz. This is easily filtered out by the RPM filter, but maybe raw gyro noise triggers the glitch. To test this theory, I rotated the board 90 degrees in the frame so that pitch would become roll and roll would become pitch and took it for a spin. Looking at black box, and now they're both glitching. Uh, why? The pitch gyro was squeaky clean too, so that didn't prove anything. And I also noticed that it's glitching at lower RPMs, but with less amplitude. Oh, so much for that. Some of you might be thinking that this might be a one-off bad gyro. Well, a few local pilots purchased the same flight controller when it became available, and they're all experiencing the exact same issue. I gathered their black box data, and the glitches look identical in the gyro traces for both of them. I have a second flight controller, but since we are three for three, I think that's good enough to conclude the issue with systematic. And I can move on to swapping out the last MPU 6000 FC I have, I'm done with this flight controller, which sucks. So I'd recommend that you avoid this flight controller and probably every flight controller with the ICM 42688P gyro until they are proven to work properly. The Betaflight team is working on making a certification program for manufacturers to help combat this issue, since it's going to become a big problem soon unless manufacturers properly design their boards to use these gyros. Hopefully manufacturers work with them so we can get some solid options moving forward. If you're a manufacturer, reach out to Sugar K. Was, was that a stripper? No, oh no, that was brown sugar. No, yeah, definitely sugar K. 
For my scythe frame, which I designed for this flight controller, I've made a 25.5 base plate as a new option, which also supports the 20 by 20 stack. I really don't like the form factor of these boards, and it doesn't look as sleek with the side nipple, but there really isn't much choice right now. The good news is I managed to design it so it's only 0.2 grams of weight heavier, so that's good at least.